Ooh, that was a good one. Rolling audio. This is the toss launch video. This is the hope that Joshua doesn't cut his own fingers off video. <laughs> it's gonna be exciting. This one's gonna be exciting. I'm about to do something really dangerous that you should totally not do. That was kind of terrifying, wasn't it? You know what? I know a better way. <laughs> that was also kind of terrifying because I don't really know how to fly a line of sight. Here's why we're making this video today. Sometimes you need to launch your quadcopter somewhere where you don't have the option of just setting it down on the ground, walking away to a safe distance, arming it, making sure that everything is okay, and then flying it off. And that's what we're doing in this video. We're gonna talk about the safest and most reliable way to hand launch your quadcopter. I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're gonna learn something today. As my initial demonstration showed, hand launching is very dangerous. You can hold the quadcopter in your hand fairly tightly, but if the flight controller decides that it needs to fight you, it is gonna fight you. And you can hold it, but if you slip, it could bite you. And inherent to launching the quad is that you're going to release it and it's going to hopefully fly away, but if at that moment it's fighting you and freaking out, it could bite you. So we're gonna do two things in this video. Number one, we're gonna focus on a way of uh, launching the quad and arming it while it's far away from us while still not setting it down on the ground. And that is toss launching. And we're gonna focus on a way of making it not fight us while it's armed until we're ready for it to do that. Let's start with toss launching. And in some sense, toss launching couldn't be simpler. You're gonna throw the quadcopter in the air, you're gonna flip your arm switch, and you're gonna fly it. But that's easier said than done, because a lot of the times when you try to toss launch, the quadcopter doesn't even freaking arm. We're gonna solve that problem in the second half of this video. But let's assume that you've solved that problem. The other challenge is gonna be that the quadcopter is tumbling through the air and getting control of it before you crash, it can be difficult. For that reason, I always toss launch in angle mode so that the quadcopter will automatically level out as soon as it arms. Once the quadcopter is armed and I have control of it, then I can hover, put my goggles down, do whatever I need to do. Now, there's some debate as to whether you should toss launch with your goggles already down or with your goggles up on your head and hover at line of sight. My personal opinion is that I do it with my goggles up on my head, I get into a line of sight hover using angle mode, and then once that's established, I lower the goggles. The reason for that is it's kind of hard to see where you're chucking the damn thing and it's pretty disorientating if it's tumbling around while you're flying. If you have a friend who's gonna throw it for you, it might make sense to have your goggles down. Your friend can aim it, throw it gently, and you can arm it and take control. Either way though, I think it makes sense to do it in angle mode so that it automatically levels out as quickly as possible. But why is the damn thing arming sometimes and other times it just goes thunk and crashes? There's actually a lot of different answers to that, but they all boil down to Betaflight wants the quadcopter to be relatively stationary at the time that you arm. When you first power up the quadcopter, the flight controller is gonna calibrate the gyro. And until it calibrates the gyro, it will not arm. In order to calibrate the gyro, the quadcopter has to be still. It doesn't matter if it's right side up or upside down, it just has to be stationary. If you hold it in your hand and you're moving it even a little bit, the gyro will not calibrate. Ideally, you'll set it down on the ground, but like we're saying at the, for this video, the premise is that you might not be able to do that. In that case, you will need to hold it relatively still in your hand. And you can actually see the, the flight controller go blink, blink, blink at the moment that it calibrates, or if you've got a buzzer, it'll make a certain beep. After the gyro is calibrated, it's still not a given that the quadcopter will arm when you flip the arm switch. If the quadcopter is rotating too quickly at the moment that you try to arm, then it may not arm at all, or it may arm and then immediately go into runaway, uh, runaway prevention and disarm itself. You see, what we'd like to be able to do is arm the quadcopter while holding it in our hand so we can be sure that it's ready to fly, but not have the PID loop be freaking out, making the quadcopter fight us and potentially bite us in the face. 
And normally, you can't do that. Normally in Betaflight, at the moment that you arm the quad, the PID loop is immediately active and the quad is trying to bite your face off. But there's a way that we can change that behavior. And in order to show you that, we're gonna have to go in and I have to go to the computer. In order to keep the quadcopter from trying to eat our face when we arm it while we're holding it in our hand, we need to disable the PID loop. The PID loop is the process by which the flight controller senses the way that the quadcopter is or isn't moving and then tries to use the motors to cause the quadcopter to move in the way that the flight controller thinks that it ought to be moving. And in our case, we're holding it in our hand so it's not able to move. And if we then arm it, it will try to fight any movement of our hand, or if it's like off level and it thinks it needs to be level, it'll try to level out, and that's when it tries to eat our face off. We need to disable the PID loop. And it turns out that there's nowhere in beta flight, like there's no aux mode that would be like PID loop disabled, but there is a command line option. And the command line option is PID at min throttle, and by default it is on. So if we set PID at min throttle equals off, if we type that exact command into the command line, and then we type the word save, our quadcopter will behave very differently. Now that I've made that change, I can plug the quadcopter in and it'll power up. I still need to hold it still in my hand. I need to wait for the gyro to calibrate. Again, if I had a beeper, it would be the last set of beeps would tell me that had happened, or I could look at the LED on the flight controller, although mine is covered up, so I can't do that. But if I wait a sufficiently long time, I can hope that the gyro is calibrated and the quad is ready to arm. And then, while holding it in my hand, I can flip the arm switch. And do you see that the quad is behaving differently? It is not fighting me. It's not trying to fly away or eat my face. The props are spinning. They're spinning at idle, and I'm not gonna like volunteer to stick my finger in there, but it's basically gone to sleep. And that means that I can arm the quadcopter and know for a fact that it's ready to arm before I toss launch it or try and do a hand launch. So how does the hand launch work then? Because if I were to just throw this quadcopter now, It wouldn't fly. The way that it works is that when the throttle is down, the PID controller is disabled and the quad is sleeping. And then as soon as I raise the throttle even a tiny bit, it wakes up and it tries to fly. But if I lower the throttle again, then it goes back to sleep, if you will. And that means that I can do a toss launch like this. Hold the quad, verify that it's a, a, a willing to arm, and then, and then throw it in the air, idle, or have somebody else throw it in the air, a little safer. You could hear that I kind of blipped the throttle just a tiny bit there, and it started to come awake again. <laughs> throw it in the air, in, in sort of sleeping mode, as it leaves your hand, as it goes up in the air, raise the throttle, and then it'll come to life. Now, there's a problem with this though. Let me demonstrate it to you. We're flying the quadcopter. Oh my God, we're in angle mode. Okay, that's better. We're flying the quadcopter, yay! And then look in the lower right-hand corner of the screen. You can see my throttle position. It's 19, 18% right now. What do you think is gonna happen if I drop throttle? Oh God. Why was I able to fly? Why did it not? Why is it still flying even after I dropped throttle? That doesn't make sense. Why was it still responding to my stick movements when I dropped throttle? The PID controller should be inactive. 4% throttle, 5% throttle, 6% throttle, 7%. Now we lower it, nope, dead again. 10% throttle, 11, 13% throttle, 12%, and we're dead again. Nope, completely dead. It's, oh, is it the air mode throttle? Is it 25%? I bet that's it. Now the PID controller is awake again, hold on. Okay, I bet it's 25% throttle. Let's keep it below 25%. And it's dead. Once we go, okay. Okay, so I think the way that this works is Betaflight has a 
a threshold it uses to decide when you have begun flying. Uh, for example, uh, runaway prevention turns off after you have raised the throttle past a certain point for a certain amount of time. I think it's 25% by default, but I'm not sure. I think it's 25% throttle for five seconds. What seems like happening is that the PID at min throttle is disabling itself after we reach that threshold. So after we arm and take off and fly away, the PID controller is, per is permanently enabled until we disarm again. That's good because I was about to tell you that if you lower throttle, you'll drop out of the air, but it seems like the Betaflight devs are smarter than that. Now there's one more thing I wanna show you, and this is really dangerous, and it is the hand launch. Hand launches are inherently dangerous because you are going to release the quad, and at the moment you release it, it is going to be near your body, near your face, near your hand, and if anything goes wrong, it will bite you. But let's imagine that there might be a time when even toss launching wasn't gonna work for us and we needed to hand launch. This is still gonna help. Now we are not gonna to wanna to be in angle mode because in angle mode, the minute I arm, the quad will try to level out. We don't want that. We wanna be in acro mode so that the quad stays at its given angle. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna hold the quadcopter out in a safe direction at an angle facing away from us with the throttle down. We're gonna arm and we're gonna slowly raise the throttle and let it take itself out of our hands and fly away. And then, then we can put it in angle mode and put our goggles down, because I can't fly line of sight for crap. I can actually fly line of sight. I can hover line of sight. Okay, now you know everything that I know about the safest possible way to do toss launches and hand launches. If you do any of this, please know that it is incredibly risky and you need a good reason for doing it. Also, please, please think of the possibility that you put your prop on wrong. And at the moment that you arm or at the moment that you raise throttle and the PID loop comes to life, the quadcopter whoop, tries to flip over, okay? Be absolutely sure that you have hover tested your quadcopter before you try this. Hover test it somewhere safe. Hover test it the morning before you leave home and know for a fact that it is ready to go because it could be bad, right? You don't need me to paint you a picture. If this video taught you something that you didn't already know, then can I ask you to consider joining my Patreon? Patreon is a website where you can subscribe to me. For as little as $2 a month, or more if you feel like I've earned it. The amount you subscribe at is totally up to you. Just ask yourself how much value you get out of my content. Is it worth two bucks? Two bucks a month? Is it worth four? Is it worth more? Whatever that number is for you, if today's the day you decide I've earned it, there's a link down below where you can join my Patreon. I'd love to have you as a supporter. And if today I haven't earned it yet, hey, that's cool. I'm gonna keep making content. I hope you keep watching the content and maybe that day will come. If you enjoyed this video, I think you're gonna enjoy this other video about a really obscure Betaflight feature that nobody knows about. It is the video transmitter function and it lets you change the band and channel and power of your video transmitter with an aux switch on your uh, radio. I'll put a card on screen and a link in the video description to where you can check that out. As well, maybe you'd like to know how to change your rate profile with the six position switch on a Boxer or TX-16S so you could get faster or slower rates. Card on screen, link in the video description. I'll see you there.